Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and it's our favorite time of the week. It is the first favorite time of the week in 2024. We've got new knives that have just hit our shelves and right in front of me are the coolest. Let's check them out. All right, we're gonna start off with fixed blades. And the first is the Buck Alpha Guide Fixed Blade. Uh, we have had and still do have uh, the Rich Light handled version of this knife, but now the Dymalux handled version is in stock. And they're the same price actually, about 210 bucks. Dymalux is essentially like your diamond wood or your pack wood material. It is laminated layers of wood veneers pressed together with you know, epoxy essentially. And you've got a very stable yet very natural looking material, not as uh, susceptible to movement, i.e warping or cracking or shrinking like natural wood sometimes can be. All wrapped up on an S35 VN blade, four and a half inches long. It's got a great drop point shape, high flat grind to keep it slicey despite a thickness being, eh, it's about an eighth of an inch thick right there. So sturdy enough for some heavy use outdoors, but not so chunky that you're not gonna be able to skin or hunt with it or slice whatever else you might wanna be slicing in an outdoor scenario. The S35 is going to give you a pretty good edge retention and pretty good toughness, good all-rounded stainless steel for this sort of use. Uh, as for the grip, it's definitely more uh, optimized, I'd say, for like a hammer or a saber grip. Uh, Gorilla grip works pretty decently too, but once you start to get in, getting into uh, like other outdoor holds like the chest lever grip, this little uh, prominent index finger groove here at the front starts to get in the way of those grips a little bit. You can get around them, but it's not the, the comfiest for those particular things. I do, however, like the thumb scallops there. Makes a pinched grip for slicing very nice for me. Feels pretty good though. We do have a protruding tang here at the back, uh, so you could do a little hammering on stuff with that if you need to. Might even be crisp enough to strike a fire steel. I don't think it's quite crisp enough uh, out near the front. If that's your thing, you might have to uh, crisp that up, although it might work in the uh, this heavy jimping section here. Possibly, but it's gonna give you that traction up there too. As for the sheath, it is leather. There it is, pockets in quite nicely, and you've got a leather retention loop with a snap. Uh, and I like the placement and you know direction of the outside loop of that snap here as well. Uh, on the front like this, less likely to get snagged when you're moving through the underbrush. Uh, a lot of sheaths will have that tab pointing forward which is like the least likely or most likely space for it to get uh, snagged and accidentally open. This is a really good spot for that, both moving forward and backwards through stuff, much less uh, worry about that accidentally opening. So that is a very nice design detail indeed. And the other thing that folks might like, the sheath here is made in the USA as well. The whole package here, US made, they didn't have to uh, you know, bring a uh, less expensive sheath over imported on the US knife, folks that like that sort of thing, you'll have that right here. Next up, the TM Hunt M14 Toe Popper is here. Custom, handmade, each one of these. We've got uh, a fairly good selection at the time of filming right here. So you can check out what we've got down below. Uh, several different handle materials, some of them like this in a beautiful orange curly maple, others with uh, G10s or paper micartas with inlays. Uh, actually, I don't know if we have any G10s, but some inlaid models anyway as well. Those are a couple bucks more. This one right here, about 465. Obviously, this is kind of a smaller version of the big M18 chopper, which part of the inspiration for that larger knife came from stuff like the Tom Brown tracker knife, which is more the size of this M14. So they've kind of brought it back down. Todd's kind of brought it back down to this size of you know, the source material, so to speak, of the inspiration while still maintaining that M18 DNA. As for what you can do with this blade, it is kind of multifunctional. It's not gonna chop as hard as the bigger M14, or sorry, M18, but with the nice beak on the handle here, you can choke back a little bit and still feel secure to get a little bit of extra leverage for some light chopping out here near the convex section at the front. We've got 01 tool steel here with Todd's heat treat for strength and the convex nature of that front kind of leans into that toughness factor gives you the meat you want behind a chop. You've got a sharpened leading edge here, which you can kind of push cut with, whether you're 
kind of chiseling stuff is where you might uh, use it most in kind of an outdoor scenario, chiseling like traps, notches, that sort of thing could be done. And then just like the uh, bigger sibling, you can always choke up right here, especially if you use a lanyard to support this on the back of your hand and use all of this belly right at the front for skinning. And then you've got the recurved hollow ground section here at the back works great as a spoke shave. It does everything the larger M18 does, except for chop quite as well on a, uh, a smaller size like that. So a little bit easier to carry as a result. Speaking of which, come with a leather sheath like so, slides right in, belt loop on the back, and you're ready to go. Check them out while we got them. Next fixed blade today is uh, not quite so outdoorsy. This is the claw. Uh -huh. uh, Kaiser Cutlery, the claw version of the variable actually. So that's why you see on the back here, variable claw. It's a simple neck style self-defensive knife in this case. You've got that hawk bill uh, blade shape right there, 154 cm steel. Uh, about $69 for it. Uh, but that blade shape there is kind of meant for one thing, one thing open, like ripping, slashing, that sort of thing. And it's meant to be very secure in the hand. You've got a large finger ring right here. Behind that, a little strip or a little block of linen micarta on each side. Grab it like so, palm it. There you go. Feels quite secure indeed. Uh, the sheath here is a little bit finicky, I will admit. Um, you'll notice it's made of Kydex, but it doesn't look at all like the blade. Uh, that's because they had to kind of get a little creative in order to create an ambidextrous Kydex sheath. So it'll go in either way just fine, uh, but it doesn't go in quite as straight as you might think. I'll kind of, let me overlay it here so you see what's going on. And I remember kind of how it's oriented. So you're kind of pointed down actually to get it to fit. And that'll be the mirror image on either side. And I'll admit I've not quite gotten used to it. As such, it sticks out not perfectly straight. It comes with the territory to keep the ambidextrous nature of this as compact as possible. Once it's in though, very secure and yet very easy to access when you need it. If you wanted to belt or pocket carry it, let's see if these holes match up with anything. So I don't see, yep, it's not small tech lock compatible. And it's not quite large. To, eh, I take that back a large tech lock or C C VVT clip will work if you want to carry it in the belt on the belt. Don't carry it in the belt. That would, take some doing. <laughs> that would indeed take some doing uh, more Kaiser to get into the first is the Veritas a Jacob Jacob Lundquist design not a Justin Lundquist. Interesting. Hmm, I wonder if they are related. It does, the page does not say at the moment. Huh, anyway, $175 for this knife. Titanium, S35BN, three and a quarter inches. Simple, basic drop point blade with a full flat grind. Gonna get the job done admirably indeed. The handle though is where the magic is going on here. Titanium, sculpted or contoured anyway, with milled triangles in it. As for accents, we've got these Chidori finished titanium on the pivot on the front, as well as the adjustable part of the pivot on the back, as well as the back spacer. My favorite detail, however, is the pocket clip. It is milled, it's held in with a single screen, screen, single screw up in a little pocketed section of the handle and it is reversible. But the way they've kept the front side nice and clean is definitely very cool you might have a very hard time seeing it. In fact, there is a filler tab here on the front and there's no screw visible. It's essentially held in place. It's threaded held in place from the screw on the backside. So there you go. Swap it around. You pop it in on the other side. It looks to me like the milling pattern matches up on the backside as well. At least I hope it does. That's very, very clean and very cool. Yeah. Let's check out the action. We've got a frame lock here. We've got, basically two ways to open. You've got the finger method with the, well, they're all finger methods, I guess. Could be. Don't, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try that. You've got the cutout in the blade for either thumb usage, which no problem there, or the reverse index finger flick or middle finger flick. You've also got a front flipper that I have no problem using there. 
works well. Decent enough grip for smaller to uh, medium duty tasks, just general everyday cutting. And you can even choke up there a little bit. Just watch the, uh, the sharpened heel of that blade right there. Gorilla grip doesn't feel too bad for quite a slim knife. Should be easy to carry, yet very sturdy feeling. They're all finger methods except the Emerson Wave. You might have broken me just there a little bit, but that's fine. Yes. <laughs> Next, uh, a $99 Kaiser. This is the Caleb Waldman designed Dogfish, a button lock knife with several opening methods that we'll get to. Uh, 3.15 inch, 154 cm blade, high flat grind on the drop point here, crown spine on the top of it, has a nice distinctive look, feels pretty good. You can do kind of the same thing I talked about the Veritas. You've got a pretty good standard grip and you can choke up on the Ricasso section here, not quite a finger choil in this case, but works quite well. Button lock works quite nicely for left or right-handed usage. And you've got kind of the same thing going on here for the reversibility uh, of the clip. It's a little easier to see here because the main aluminum section of this knife is more of like a matte gray, almost like a, well, more like a graphite. And the clip section with the milled clip here is black, single pocket screw, and matching plate there on the front, matching color anyway of the back matches up with the grooves, stays nice and clean. You see something there, but it doesn't look like a screw kind of cluttering up the look. And in fact, that's maintained all throughout. No visible, other visible screws on the front or back other than the pivot itself and the pocket clip on that single position or single screw right there. So very cool way of building it right there too. As for the opening methods, you can see I'm doing that centrifugal wrist flick or centripetal, whatever you want to call it. Cue the comment section. You have reverse or standard flipping capability with the rounded corner edged tab right here. Works pretty easily despite it seeming like, is there enough grip there? Yes, yes there is. Front flipping, no problems, no problems indeed. And you've got the blade cut out for thumb or flicking opening as well. It's a little bit deeper there. As you can see, the shape when it's closed is kind of a half moon cutout. Not really, but you know what I mean? Versus the rounded cornered rectangular cutout when it's open. So you can't quite get in there as much as I might like, but I do have rather large fingers. So your mileage may vary. Back to another pr more premium Kaiser. This is the Jonathan Styles Militaw, a frame locking knife for 159 bucks. A uh, 3.35 inch drop point blade, S35VN, high flat grind with a switch. Lots of good stuff going on there. Slicey enough blade geometry. This should be a very handy slicer and cutter every day. Certainly not a weak geometry, but I like the, uh, the very good sliciness of this. Handles are titanium. We've got black micarta inlays on the front and on the back. Milled titanium pocket clip. Single position in this case, you don't have the... Uh, the cool block out plate on the opposite side. We've got a frame lock as mentioned. Let's check out the opening methods here. We've got the thumb cut out, no problem. Works great for the index finger flip for me. And you've got front flipping, which also is working quite well. Very hand filling grip, I would say for this guy. It's, it doesn't actually seem super thick to the eye, but it's squared off enough and wide enough that it does the job quite nicely. You've also got a bit of contour to keep it from feeling too blocky. Uh, and then that works pretty well. You can use it back here, get a little bit of finger protection from your index finger, but if you wanted to choke up and get right behind that edge, there's nothing getting in the way. No flipper tab, no kind of prescriptive finger, uh, index finger groove or anything like that. That's gonna be very comfortable. And all your grip coming from those back two fingers is still gonna have a lot to grab onto with that handle. Yeah, that actually works really, really well. Next up, the uh, Sparrow from Vincent Rizzo of Blackbird Blades, as the logo indicates there on the back. 159 bucks for this knife. You got a three and a quarter inch S35 VN blade, modified sheep's foot shape uh, with a flat profiled saber grind right there going to be a pretty sturdy everyday carry knife. Not too thick, but the geometry itself uh, leans a little bit less away from the slicey side of things while not getting too far away from it. Uh, but it, it gives you a little bit more of that kind of bruiser mentality for it. 
but should still be pretty nice to use. We've got a matte finished titanium handle. This has a bit of that kind of Chris Reeve, uh, like uh, what's the word? Sandblasted type of finish. So if you're into that sort of thing, if you're into those snail trails developing from uh, usage in your pocket, you know, taking on the character of everyday life, this should do that quite nicely. It is also reversible. You can see we've got that cool filler tab thing going on with the screw holding it in from the opposite side of the knife right there. Very cool. Ball bearings in the pivot of this knife. Uh, in fact, all of these uh, folders so far have been that way. Flipper tab works great. Let's try the reverse flick. Nice and snappy. Let's try the thumb. And it needs a little bit of a pinch to help uh, get it moving if you want to uh, open it the slowest way possible. The slowest way possible would come in two hands. That, I guess that would also be a pinch now, wouldn't it? They're all finger methods. There you go. They're <laughs> all finger methods. Please, let's not make that a new catchphrase for 2024. We don't need to be talking about finger methods here. <laughs> uh, next up. The Christian Nyat designed, probably, probably pronouncing that name very incorrectly, cryptid. Button lock folder right here, uh, 79 bucks, three inches of 154 cm. We'll call that a modified sheep's foot. No, we'll call that a sheep's foot. Forget about it. Oh, the website. Guess what they call it? I already know. It's the first reverse Tonto of the year, folks, and I couldn't be more sad about it. Whatever. Call it what you want to call it. I'm going to call it a, a modified uh, sheep's foot. It's almost more worn cliffy in its, its actual tip pointiness. Call it what you want to call it. I don't care. 154 cm, as I mentioned, good, capable, performing steel for this price range. Thick enough, but not too thick. High enough of a flat grind. Just an all-around all decent cutter. Micarta for the handles. We've got a reversible pocket clip. So you've got that pocket there on the front so it sits nice and flush when screwed in and the screw heads are also nice and flush and it is nice and deep carry too. The button lock itself works great in either hand. Let's check out the thumb stud action. Quite nice. It's kind of a three and a half finger grip for my slightly larger than average hands when I hold it uh, kind of in the standard position. If your fingers are small enough, you could kind of get a fingertip up uh, right behind the edge for you know guiding that tip a little bit of precision there but for me if i wanted a bigger grip i could just sidle up on the handle just a little bit put my finger right around the uh, pivot area i could get a pretty good gorilla grip on this knife when i would need to one more micarta folder this is the nick consoli designed task with the clutch lock their version of the crossbar lock which is adjustable so you've got five holes on either side of the uh, the liner where you've got uh, one end of the Omega Springs sticking in there. You can move it around to uh, adjust the tension depending on which hole you prefer. I've never done it on any of the, uh, well, I guess I only have one. I have a drop bear. I don't own any other clutch lock knives, but they've all felt good right out of the box. And this one does as well. I mean, check it out. That was a little embarrassing. Works just fine. You got there. Feels very good. Full length liners, micarta handles, feels very sturdy. The micarta on both of these last two knives is going to give you a little bit of extra tack traction. Uh, it's got that matte finish to it, so it's not slick. And of course, water will uh, only enhance that. You know, micarta, especially the more ragged finishes, tends to feel a little more sticky is the word. Feels more grippy when wet. There you go. We've got a reversible pocket clip, not inset in the handle scales in this case, but it is nice and low profile and the screws are flush. No real problems to worry about there. The crossbar lock is working great. As far as action, we've also got thumb studs if you wanna do it that way. We've also got, yeah, you can move that thumb stud around, it looks like. Interesting, you're not, you're not gonna be able to move it all the way to the front. As you can see, some of the path of that slot is taken up by the handle there, but you can actually adjust this uh, thumb stud forward and back a little bit. You might only be able to use half that travel. Anyway, again though, if you want to adjust it, you can, but if not, it works just fine exactly where it is. So take that under advisement. Solid Gorilla Grip on just the uh, back half of the knife. And then if you've got the smaller fingers, like I mentioned, you could get in there and do that fingertip grip. They're also calling this a reverse Tonto on the website. I'm gonna call it a modified, I don't care. Uh, you've got 154 CM steel here, $82 on this knife. I didn't mention that yet. High flat grind, swedge out there near the tip. Again, 
good cross section between strength and slicing capability with the geometry right here. Modified cheese knife. Modified cheese. If you want to cut cheese with it, one could. Let's check out the next knife. Um, this is another one I disagree with the blade shape on the website. They're calling it a Warncliffe. You're just Mr. Contrarian here. I mean, that's, that's a sheep's foot through and through. Come on. This is the James Brand Wells in a new rose gold finish. Uh, $425 for this version, so it's a, it is definitely pricey. Uh, but you've got a three inch magna cut blade, stone washed finish under that rose gold coloration, and that rose gold is pulled into the pivot and the wire pocket clip and screws there at the back. Speaking of that wire pocket clip, the thing I like about what they do here, see if we can get a good angle on it, you actually have two little tracks or troughs milled into the aluminum handle where the pinch point sits for that clip. So instead of it skittering around on top, it has a little bit more stability than, uh, than some wire pocket clips can have sometimes. And I like the way they anchored it in the handle too. You've got a essentially a block out plate keeping it down with flush screws. So it's all nice and flush, nothing sticking up at all. Nice execution. It is one sided, however, it's not uh, a reversible clip, uh, which is kind of a shame since a button lock is easily swapped from uh, left or easily used in the left or the right hand. But the action, I mean, come on. I think we all know who makes these at this point, but look at that, that feels really good. Action is great. Magna cut blade steel, so great performance. It's the first magna cut blade today. So if you're unfamiliar, it's very tough. It holds an edge a long time and it is very stainless. It's a really great material. And like I said, the action feels good. This is made in the USA. Uh, this and the Klein, I think, are the only two USA made uh, James brands at this point. Very clean profile when folded up. You can definitely, uh, or at least I always appreciate their design language. Say what you will about their marketing or their pricing or anything else the way they actually present themselves in the hand, always very clean and impressive. Uh, next up, there's a rose gold Elko slip joint from the James brand, $75 for this. One and three quarter inches on the blade, 12C27 from Sandvik there, full flat grind, just a generic little pen blade basically. Uh, gonna get your small cutting tasks done day to day. It comes with a nice high quality split ring, but it is not attached out of the box. Uh, you have that protruding lanyard section there at the back that you can attach to your key ring with, or you can use that as a little screwdriver or pry tip, which is kind of cool too. Half stop along the action, snappy enough overall, nice and clean. Again, James Brand staples. The next item is from the James Brand and it's their most affordable knife yet, or their most affordable knife shaped object. 25 bucks for this uh, wooden knife kit. If you are still at this point, uh, first week of January, if you still haven't bought your Christmas gifts for last, last year, you're slacking, but it's okay. We've got this. This would have made a, a great gift if we'd had them last month. Uh, still would make a great gift, but you know, just not necessarily coinciding with the holidays. Uh, there are a few wooden knife handle or wooden knife kits out there these days, but not a whole lot. So it's cool to see some more. Uh, this one is based off of the James Brand Carter. Very clean design as well. Here's all the parts. I haven't put one together. I'm sure you get the picture. Feels good. Comes with a nice little tin and the instructions, of course. Have fun. All right, how about another slip joint? We've got a new version of the Tactile Bear, pronounced or spelled Bexar. <laughs> this is the limited edition nitro version. And I think they're kind of going for that kind of like nitro cold brew look with the uh, kind of a coffee colored thing. Uh, they're calling it golden brown Cerakote, however. Whatever you call it, again. If we established nothing else in this video so far and in this long history of videos on the Knife Center, call things whatever you wanna call them. It doesn't change whether they're cool or not. And this is pretty cool. It's got a nice look. You've got, I don't know what that, oh yeah, it is. It's coffee with an energy bolt. Definitely a nitro cold brew thing. I was looking at it this way and it, it looked like a padlock, but it's, it's a little mug. Can we move on now? Yes. Sir. Okay, cool. Magna cut blade, just under three inches long, about 2.85 in fact. Uh, stone wash finish, nice and thin, very, very slicey, very acute tip on the clip point profile. Comes with a bead there at the back, attached to the little fob. Action, walk and talk, quite, quite nice. Works really well, 
cuts really well, priced at about $2.99 right now. Very thin, very easy to carry, very slicey, very good. Next up, we've got the Stretch 2 XL Lightweight Salt from Spyderco in H2 Steel. Okay, Whew. nailed it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is the Stretch 2 XL in the saltified version. Comes in about 130 right now. You've got that big four inch blade with the full length, uh, or sorry, full straight spine. That's the word, huh, Jiminy Christmas. Uh, Jiminy New Year's? That was a couple days ago. Yeah. Uh, hollow grind on this with a, uh, we'll call it a saber profile with hollow geometry there. Uh, because this is H2 steel, as mentioned, which if you're familiar with the H1 steel uh, from Spyderco's salt series up to this point, it's kind of been the, the standard uh, baseline steel. H2 is basically the same thing. <laughs> um, the reason they're switching to H2 from H1 is less to do from a performance difference. In the real world, you probably shouldn't see much of any, if any at all. It's more of a supplier issue that led them to uh, the H2, as I understand it. So... Not going to hold an edge forever, but it's a very durable steel, and it is pretty much 100% stainless. That's its claim to fame, and that's the Salt Series' claim to fame. Everything in here, from everything inside the handle all the way up to the blade, is designed to not corrode. So really, if you're looking for something to use out in the water, especially salt water, Spyderco's Salt Series is like the game in town. They do what they do like no one else does. does. Anyway... Apart from that, though, it's the solid backbone of the Stretch 2 XL. You've got plenty of handle length there to hold on to. You've got the sing signature Spyderco finger choil for choking up for more fine control. You've got the bi-directional texturing on the bright yellow scales here. It gives you plenty of grip. Four-position pocket clip suits any preference out there in terms of carry. Mid-mounted back lock, perfectly ambidextrous. Same with the clip, as mentioned before, and the opening method there with the signature Spyderco thumb hole. Whole nine yards. Great, nice and lightweight. Not super lightweight though. I mean, let's see, we're, <laughs> I kind of take that back. 2.96 ounces for a four inch blade. That's pretty darn lightweight indeed. Certainly not gonna, not gonna weigh you down. So it doesn't even have to, you don't even have to be thinking about, you know, corrosion resistance to appreciate what this blade has to offer. Very easy to carry, very capable. All right, next up, we've got a new flashlight from Olight. This is the Arc Flex, and its claim to fame is the pivoting head. Big flex there. Big flex. Ding, ding, ding. About $80 for this flashlight. Right now, we have them in black and orange. Uh, if there are other colors that we will, I'm sure, be having them soon. Uh, that's what we have at this point. Maximum output of this light is 1,000 lumens. Uh, minimum output of the light, let's see, do I have that here? is a uh, 1.5 lumen. So you've got that kind of moonlight mode as well. Uh, battery is internal, it's not user replaceable, uh, and it is rechargeable with Olight's typical magnetic charging architecture here, right in the base. And just in terms of ease of pointing this where you need to point it hands-free, it's got a lot going for it. The clip is two position right here, so you can use that way if you wanna slide it, you know, lens down into your pocket, that'll work. You can slide it lens up into your pocket. You could also slide it onto the brim of your hat. It's a little bit heavier than some options for that, but that is an option. Or on the underside of the brim of your hat, and if you need to angle it down a little bit, you can angle it down a little bit. Or throw it in a pocket or in a shirt collar or something like that, throw it all the way forward and you've still got hands-free lighting even without the hat or any kind of headband adapter. That's pretty cool. I should mention also, the magnet at the base doesn't work just for charging, it also works for... Let's see, do we have something here? No. Yeah, there we go. This is very thin metal, it'll work better on other things. Right? It should work pretty well. Oh yeah, that's super solid right there. You can magnet it to other things as you're working on it and direct that light where you need it to go. Again, no hands. Pretty nice indeed. Got all those blades made of steel. I didn't want to throw it on, like I didn't want to scratch anything. Thomas, leave that in so they know why I didn't do that. So you don't have a knife in your pocket. <laughs> That's, is that just a trick to get me to pocket check for these people? 
Let's show the last knives we have on the table. Uh, the Benchmade Culinary Knives are uh, now available from dealers, so we're happy to have them now. Uh, the most original of the designs is the Station Knife right here. Big, broad blade. It's kind of a hybrid between kind of several different styles in a way. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of like uh, the Bunka Bocho styled stuff. Uh, it's got a bit of that K-tip thing going on. The height of a cleaver, like a Chinese style cleaver almost but it's got enough rock. Yeah, feels pretty comfortable there. Just a smaller chef-y style knife or Santoko-y style knife, whatever you wanna call it for smaller jobs. 5.82 inches on the blade, CPM 154. So it's the powdered version of 154 CM. It is much tougher than your everyday 154 CM. And it is nice and thinly ground. Thin enough there, swedge along the top, full flat grind, very, very thin behind the edge itself. I mean, it is just gonna be a kitchen scalpel, I think. But the CPM 154 will lend it a little bit of toughness as well. You can get it in two handle variations. You've got Rich Light with a G10 bolstered end and uh, brass colored ring around that back point. I should mention, make sure to keep these nice and clean. There's uh, plenty of cracks and crevices going on here. So just keep that in mind. This version's about $340. You can get the same knife in this version, two tones of G10 and a black coating. That is a few bucks more, mostly down to the coating in that case. Uh, ooh, it's more than a few bucks more, 425 for that version. Uh, you can also get the three knife set in this coloration for 900 or this other one for 1100. That comes with these other three knives that you see right here. It comes with an eight inch bladed chef's knife, full flat ground of CPM 154. Again, nice and thin. As far as the action here on a cutting board, has a good rock to it. It's not clunky coming down onto the cutting board, so that's nice. Uh, the whole thing actually works really well in the pinch grip you're gonna wanna use for standard chef knife usage as well. That's about eight inches, you've got the six inch bladed version, just a hair over that six inch mark for smaller chef knifey style stuff you might wanna do, uh, even some slicing, and you've got a roughly four inch utility knife, all scaling down uh, on the handles just a little bit, all same materials, all nice and slicey. All right, that's all we've got to show you today. Welcome to 2024. We're excited to see uh, the new stuff coming up. Uh, SHOT Show is right around the corner, uh, the third week, I think, of January. Should know this since we're going. We are going. Thomas and I and Seth V will be there uh, showing you all the new stuff. We're gonna see a lot of cool new knife unveils at the show. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. I, I rarely say this thing, uh, this sort of thing, but subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell icon for uh, notifications. So as soon as we put the videos out of the new stuff that's being unveiled, you will be able to see it. Thank you very much. Uh, let me know what you thought of these knives down there in the comment section below. If you wanna get your hands on any of them as well, links are in the description and that will take you to knifecenter.com. Or don't forget about our long running knife rewards program, because if you're gonna buy one of these knives for yourself today, might as well earn some free money to spend on a future one, eh? Might as well. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.